Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a doll bed. Now here on the show, I have demonstrated how to make quite a few toys. And all of those patterns are available on my website, acutabovewoodworkings.com for free. They're there for the taking. But I have received multiple, multiple requests that say, Kenny, you know what? I love your construction toys. I love the trucks. I love this. I love that. But how about something for my granddaughter? How about a girl's toy? And I thought, you know what? Why not make a doll bed? It's simple, um, I can offer the pattern, and it's something that's available to every level of woodworking. So, without further ado, let me show you what I've got in mind. Well, I've gone on the computer and I have drawn up what I think will be a usable set of plans to make this doll bed. And this is a half scale drawing, so um, if it shows four inches here in actual length, the actual dimension would be eight. So just so you're aware of that, this is not a full scale one-to-one -one pattern like what I normally do. The only one-to-one -one part is the tenon detail of the rails. So to start the ball rolling, I have cut the two side rail pieces. I have also cut these head and foot rails. And the last piece that I have cut is the headboard top. And that is the piece that I want to concentrate right now on making. So I want to get this radius drawn on here. And I'm just going to show you how we're going to go about that. Well, if we look at the detail of our tenon here, we can see that they are 5 16th of an inch deep. So what I have done is I have placed a line on each end here to represent that tenon at 5 16th. I have also placed a mark at 1 inch, and that is the lower half of our headboard. I also have placed a center mark. And what I have here is just a scrap piece of board with a center line, and I have set my compass to an eight inch radius. So what you wanna do is line up that center line with this center line, and you can use your compass with that eight inch radius. We'll set it up here, and we will just draw that radius here onto our headboard. And that's it. That is the shape of our headboard there. There's nothing more to it than that. So at this point in time now, what we want to do is we want to concentrate on our tenons. And for that, we're going to head over to the table saw. So in order to cut these tenons, what I'm using is a dado blade. Now I know some of you don't have them. Don't worry about it. You can use a regular blade and just make multiple pa passes to get your tenons. But what I've done is I have the blade set to be 1 8th of an inch from the table surface and I also have it set so that it will strike right at that line at 5 16th that we drew earlier on our headboard top. So what I'm going to do essentially is place our headboard piece on its flat surface and we're going to run it through for one pass. At that point, we can turn it 90 degrees, run it through for another pass. Again, turn it 90 degrees, one more pass. Turn it 90 degrees and one last pass, and that should form your tenon. Now, this project was designed with simplicity in mind, and this way there's not too much extra finagling or setup. So with this now done on this end of our eight and five eighth inch long piece, with our fence, all we need to do is turn this around. Our stop lock is already in place and we can do the other side the exact same way and get our tenon cut. As well, we can also do our other three eight and five eighth inch pieces for our head and footboard rails. And before too long, you'll have all of your tenons cut. The good thing about doing it like this on a table saw is you get a really straight, really even shoulder all the way around. Um, and it just helps a lot with the assembly. So now we can turn our attention to our 14 and 5 8 inch long pieces. We will have to reset our stop so that it strikes at a line that I've placed 5 16ths of an inch in from the end of each board 
but it's the exact same process. Run it through, flip it 90. Run it through, flip it 90. Keep going until you have the tenons cut on both of your bed side rails. Now here's the thing. The tenon on the top headboard part is actually a lot smaller than what we've cut it. So you can do this in several ways. You can mark it out so that the tenon ends up being three quarters of an inch thick and cut it by hand, or you can raise your blade so that it will remove the material that you need to remove in order to make the tenon its final three quarters of an inch. And that's what I've done. I've raised my blade, made one more pass with the top of the headboard facing down to complete the tenon on the headboard. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw. We're going to cut that radius, sand it up to the line to make it nice and purty. If you don't have a scroll saw, use a fret saw, use a band saw. Heck, you could even just sand it. There's not much material to remove there. Either way, get your headboard top piece shaped and that would be it for our rail pieces. And with that being done, we can turn our attention to our four bed posts. It's now time to mark for our mortises. And we have several to cut, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the inside ones that go for the length. And for that, it's just one tenon. It will be on the lower half. We'll mark our center line here at 3 eighths of an inch. And our tenon will actually start from the bottom at one inch up. And it will end up being three quarters of an inch long. So we can mark a mark at one and three quarters as well. And we can do that on all four of our bedposts. Now you may note that here is our mark at one inch. Well, I've also placed a mark one eighth of an inch up from that. This is our mark at one and three quarter, and I have placed a mark down here at five eighths, one and five eighths. And the reason for that is these here, these inside marks, they are going to be the center of a brad point bit because we're gonna hog out the majority of these mortises with a drill bit. And because our tenon is one quarter of an inch thick, we are going to use a one quarter inch diameter drill bit. So half of that will bring us back one eighth of an inch in from each one of our edges. So I have these marked and what we need to do is mark for our other mortises that we need in our posts. So these, as I said, are the holes for the side rails. So we will place them where they go with their marked mortises in place in line for our side rails. We now need to mark the mortises that are going to be in between here for our head and our footboard. So we will mark at the bottom on the inside edge of each one of these the exact same marks that we just produced on for our side rails. So what you'll end up with is your original marks for your mortises right here, and then on the inside, one right here. At this point now, we need to mark for the top of our head and our footboards, and that mortise will actually be 5 eighths of an inch down from our top edge of our posts. So I'm gonna mark here at 5 eighths down, and then three quarters down for the center of our hole. And I will mark the same as what we did before, our three quarters of an inch down from our five eighths. And then one eighth of an inch back for the drill bit. And that will give us, I fix there an error, I'll just get rid of those. But that will give us our other mortises for uh, the tenons of our upper and lower headboard pieces. So we can place those marks following the dimensions on the plans on all our pieces and then we're going to head over to the drill press. 
Well, over here at the drill press, I have a quarter inch bit installed. I have my fence set so that the center of that bit will strike in the center of our three quarter posts exactly. And I have a stop here so that the edge of the hole will line up with our mark at one inch from the bottom. Or in other words, it's going to line up the center of our brad point bit with our mark at one and one eighth from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is in each one of our pieces, for starters, in the bottoms where I need those mortises, I'm going to line them up here so I don't get confused, I'm going to drill the one hole in the bottom of each one of these mortises. And I'm going to drill them at 5 16th of an inch deep. And now we need one in the opposite side so we can just turn this up against our stop and drill that hole as well. And we'll repeat that with all of our four posts. And now with that being done, we can reset our stop fence here so that it lines up with the top mark, mark of our mortise. We'll set our stop block and then drill the top marks of our mortises. And while we have them here, we can now slide it back and forth to drill out the center parts and just roughly hog out the middle of each one of these. And you should have something that looks like that. So we'll complete that for the bottom mortises on each one of the bed posts. Now we still have the inside top mortises to hog out at each one of these pieces. But we'll have to reset our fence, of course, because they're not the same distance as what the bottom ones are. So it's no big deal. We can just reset the fence and repeat the process to do all the drilling in order to get these hogged out for the most part. And once you get that drilling done, we're gonna head back over to the workbench. So over here at the bench, what I've done is I have marked our edges of our mortises here on each one of our pieces. We're just going to use a half inch chisel, just like this, and we're going to trim down the recess here to finish off our mortises and make them complete. And as well, in the corners, using a quarter inch chisel, we are going to finish these off. But we're going to line it up and we will chop out our mortises to fit our rails into our bed posts. There we go. So I don't think we need a video of me chopping out all of these mortises. Just get in there with a chisel um, and clean them out. Make sure that they're all fitting nicely. And at that point in time, I think I'm going to do a little bit of an optional step here that isn't on the plans. I have all the mortises chopped out, but I don't know what I was thinking when I designed this that I made the tenons to be 5 sixteenths of an inch long because there isn't enough girth in the leg of this bed for this tenon and say this one to go in and fit snugly. They butt into each other. So what I have done is taken them over to the table saw and cut them down to quarter inch long. I will revamp that on the plan so that when you guys see that, um, you will have the corrected version. But for now, there you go. Um, this is why I do test builds on the show. The tenons are too long by 1 16th, so cut them back to a quarter inch. So although the plans do not state it, I think what I would like to do is put a 45 degree chamfer on the top edge of each one of our bed posts. And I'm just going to do that here at the table saw. Well, after giving everything a good sanding, making sure that you knock off all your sharp corners, we're going to glue the bed together. That's the headboard and the footboard. 
The assembly is exactly the same for both, so I'll just demonstrate it here on our footboard. The only thing you really need to make sure of is that when your two pieces are put together for your headboard or your footboard, that you have your mortises sticking out to one side. And as long as you have that, then you have your assembly correct. So clean up all your squeeze out, clamp together the headboard and the footboard, and then while we're waiting for that to dry, we can move on to just a couple of the other pieces. We have some quarter inch by quarter inch by 14 inch long, in this case, cherry. And these will be the rails for the mattress supports. So we're going to basically glue these in place here, level with the bottom of each of our side rails on the bottom inside face. So we can glue those in place and let them dry up. Well, at this point, I've got the bed glued together. The entire frame is the way it should be. There's just 14 more pieces to put in place, and that would be these mattress support slats. Now, they are just pine half inch by quarter inch, and they are um, eight and a quarter inches long. So what we will do is in the one end here, we will space this out one quarter inch from the end, and glue it in place. Then we'll space it a half inch and glue the next one. Then a half inch, a half inch, all the way down. You get the point. Uh, once I'm done all that, you can let that set up and dry. And then there's just one last piece that we need to add to this to make the bed complete. Just before I carry on to the final piece of this build, I just want to point something out to you. Normally with mortise and tenon, um, you want to see the tenons go at least, in this case here, you want to see it go at least half of the distance into this section here. So with these bed posts being three quarters of an inch um, wide, you would normally want to see the tenons be at least three eighths. I compensated a little bit and pulled it back at five sixteenths. And then because they were butting into each other, because I wasn't thinking, uh, I reduced it again to quarter inch. It's not a very strong tenon, guys. So what I've done is I have drilled a one eighth inch diameter hole here, right through the bed post, right through the tenon, and then I have glued and pinned it with these 1 8 inch dowels. And I'll just cut them flush, sand them flush, and that will go a long way to strengthening the joint. Um, little girls can play just as rough as little boys, and you want those joints to be strengthened up. So now that I have that finished up, let's get to the final piece. And the final piece is the mattress. So for the mattress, I have this piece of foam that I have purchased. Uh, I think it was 10 bucks for this piece here, 24 by 16 by two. And I'm just going to use a steel straight edge and an X-Acto knife to cut it to the size that I need. And then we can set it in place in our bed frame. Okay, well, truth be told, I was really hating the edge that the knife was giving. Even with sharp knives, brand new blades, it's still catching the foam and tearing. So believe it or not, I thought I would give it a try in the bandsaw. And it gave absolutely perfectly cut results. Guys, I even went so far as to resaw it because I thought the mattress was too thin. So I resawed the um, two inch foam down to one inch to give a much more proportionate mattress here. One thing I will caution you, if you're going to use your bandsaw to cut this foam, please be careful. Please take it slow. There is a large possibility that it can catch and drag into the saw. Do not let your hands be part of that. Um, this here, it went with, with no problems whatsoever. But again, you want to take it slow. Don't compress the foam. Let the blade do the cutting. And if for some reason, at some point in time, the blade wants to take the foam, let it have it. Don't try to save it. Just let it go. Um, so there you go. There is the mattress cut. And that, boys and girls, is pretty much our project for today. And there you have it.
a doll bed. Guys, this project was a lot of fun, a little bit of tweaking along the way, but that is one of the pitfalls of making a pattern on the computer and then making it here on the show for the first time. This is kind of like the test build. So of course we had a couple issues with the tenon length and that sort of thing. Now I'm not going to change the pattern. I'm going to leave it as it is, other than the few little corrections but I'm not going to increase the girth of the bed posts in order to allow the longer tenons. Um, if you want to do that, it's very easily done because really it doesn't change much. Um, your bed will actually be a little larger if you do that just because that the thickness of those bed posts, it's gonna to add to the length and to the width, just that little bit. But if that's what you want to do, then do it. Guys, this project is 100%, uh, it's screaming to be modified for whatever you want. If you want this for a different type of doll or if you want this for a different size doll, then by all means make it. If you want to shrink it right down and make it for Fisher Price little people, then why not? That's what it's all about, taking the project, making it your own through modifications and changing it to suit your own needs. Now I will say about this foam, while I had success with the bandsaw, with resawing and cutting it to size, you want to use a fine tooth blade guys. If you use too coarse of a blade in your bandsaw, you will hook that foam and it will just pull it through your saw and destroy your foam, possibly damage your saw. So don't use too coarse of a blade. Use a fine tooth blade and you can go from there. But whatever you do with it, please just be careful. Of course, uh, the resaw is the toughest part there on the foam, and to completely alleviate that, I would suggest that you buy one inch thick foam, not two inch like what I had here today. Cutting the length and the width on the bandsaw is just fine as long as you don't compress it and you should have no issues. Now you can't just leave a bed like this, of course, and I got my wife to make up a little pillow and some sheets for it. And uh, there's the finished product right there. And the, the, the granddaughter, of course, is going to love it. She's gonna lose her mind when she sees this little bed. And this is going to be, of course, an heirloom toy, guys. And the reason it becomes an heirloom toy is because it will be hopefully passed down through the generations and in the bottom I will wood burn to you know my granddaughter love pop and then the date in there so hopefully this will be passed on through the generations long after I'm gone guys I hope you've enjoyed today's project this one was a lot of fun and as always with any of the toys that I make here on the show, this one is available for you for free. If you are interested in the drawing of how to make this doll bed, all you need to do is visit my website, a cutabovewoodworkings.com. You click on the free pattern section and it's right there. You've got the free download of the pattern. You've got the photo of the finished product as well as the accompanying uh, tutorial video right there on that page. So feel free to visit the website and grab that pattern for yourself if you wanna make yourself a doll bed. If you're a little bit internet challenged and you're not sure of how to get it from the site, guys, you can always send me an email, Kenny E at a cut above woodworkings.com, and I'd be more than happy to send the pattern along to you. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell, and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the toy. I hope you've enjoyed the content I've brought you today. I hope you're going to try this yourself for the young ones in your life. And more importantly, I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.